Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, continuing to work on the beginning of the fifth pass here. I'll be working on water today, and I think maybe some more leaves around the flower bud. I don't think I'll actually get to the flower bud today. If we do, we'll probably just be sort of outlining it with the, uh, the leaves. Maybe next time. lovely day today. I said we were done with the summer heat, but uh, nature decided to prove me wrong. <laughs> it's supposed to be a hotter one today. Just for like a day though. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes in Canada you have to switch between heat and air conditioning from one day to the next. Sometimes even in the same day, although generally not. I try to plan ahead. So like if I know it's going to be a hot day, even if the temperature in the house falls a degree or two below where I like to keep it, I'll just leave it so that I have a bit more of a buffer for when, yeah, the heat really spikes. So I got a short little piece here. I'm just gonna do some at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna add a new piece, I think. might, I'll probably have more than one piece here of this color because there's quite a lot of it. It kind of branches off a bit, so yeah. So I was saying I hoped I would get to 50% this month, but yeah, I will be working on preserving my apple harvest. So that usually takes at least five days out of my normal activities. Yeah, it all depends on how many apples I get, which I can't be sure doesn't look like an overly big harvest this year, but it is still uh, a decent amount. Two, two, three. So I'm going to do these and go back up and then cross as I go for the ones above. Actually, I colored, I missed one, didn't I? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, okay, so what I actually did is this, <laughs> I think, yep. Because apparently I can't count today. Oh dear. Oh my goodness, there. Summer's not quite over. Went for a walk with uh, my friend and her dog the other day and I got bitten by a mosquito, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I swatted him, but I guess not before, not before he bit me. <laughs> or I guess I should say she, right? They said the ones that bite you are the females, but anyway. Yeah, not so bad though. When I first moved out here, I reacted very badly to the mosquito bites, I think because they must have been different species than the ones I was used to back in BC. So yeah, it really sucked. They swelled up very badly. I had to ice pack them because they were so uncomfortable. Yeah, it took a couple years. Now I just get sort of the normal amount of skin irritation, but nothing unmanageable. Yeah, so it was funny. Um, if you followed me for a while, you'll know a few months ago we sold our old truck. We had an old right-hand drive um, Isuzu Trooper that um, 
our son was driving once he got his, uh, his license. And my husband did a bunch of work on it and he was going to sign it over to him. Then we discovered that the insurance would have been like $8,000 a year. Like, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So we went, yeah, okay. That's not practical, especially for a vehicle that is a diesel. So you can't even drive it all year. Out here, it just gets too cold for a diesel engine to start. Yeah, it could start to about minus 20, but anything be below that, it's not going to. And um, so we sold it. First, we tried to private sale it, but that's, you know, that's a pain. And so then my husband took it to the dealership to see how much they would buy it for. Whether, you know, sometimes they give you more in trade-in or they... And anyway, what they wanted to give us for it was pretty much what we were hoping to get for it if we sold it ourselves. So we just went, okay, yeah, here you go, take it. And um, yeah, my husband got a call the other day, somebody asking about it because um, it's up for sale now, a few cities over. And uh, the guy who's interested wanted some history and they, they managed to give him the contact information for us. Uh, so, actually, I'm gonna cross these as I go. Yeah, I love to think of it. Anyway, so yeah, my husband got to tell him that, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's a good vehicle. We didn't get rid of it because there were problems. It was just that it wasn't practical. And this guy is from like Vancouver Island. So for him, a diesel engine is fine because it doesn't get cold enough there generally. Like, I think the coldest I remember it getting was about minus 15 and that was rare. Yeah, so. So yeah, it's just kind of funny because, you know, we sold it months ago and we thought that was the end of it. And then, yeah, I got to hear from it again. I said, did they think you still had it? He said, oh no, it was just, yeah. They wanted to ask if I, history of it. And yeah, he said like, it was good. We, it's got new timing belt and new shocks and all this stuff because we did all that before we realized that the insurance would be so expensive for a new driver. And I think it was more because it's also a right-hand drive where, because it's from Japan and here everything's left-hand, so yeah. Yeah, I say, I kind of miss that vehicle. It was, it was a fun vehicle because it was really good for off-roading. Yeah, in fact, um, that's how my son got his Jeep stuck, oh, I think like the second week he had it because he tried to drive through a muddy area and the trooper would have made it, but the Jeep did not. And it got stuck right up to the fenders. Yeah, it was, oh. Yeah, so I said, yeah, it was our kid's first tow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had to call a tow truck because my husband would not be able to pull it out with just his regular truck. That was, yeah, not going to happen. So, and he had to dig it quite down far so that they could actually pull it out. Yeah. They actually had to put on the, the parking brake and put the tow rope through the, the wheel axles and pull it out that way, <laughs> but they got it out with no damage. So yeah, we just said lesson learned. Yeah. And we said you were lucky too because he was out on the range roads out of town and i said you're lucky that you still had cell coverage there because yeah imagine if you didn't and then you had to hike back to town until you could find a signal that would have yeah that would have sucked <laughs> so yeah He likes going for drives, but we said, you know, gas isn't cheap either, so, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he likes that little Jeep, so. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, nine years old, but really low mileage, so, yeah, we got, I think, I think we got a good deal. And he's been driving it for months and no problems have cropped up, so yeah. 
Okay, so I could kind of cut this off here and curve out this way, or I could sort of go back up here a bit, which is what I think I'm gonna do. So the flower bud kind of curves away this way and I can see the edge of it outlining here and the, the, the leaf colors are here because I'm pretty sure these colors are, oh, that's green as well. So I think I'm gonna start with, yeah, this here. I'm gonna do the darker leaf colors. It's sort of like a triangle shape here. And I'll probably do that and carry on downwards and then later come up, start shading in the flower bud like that. So I started off creating this diagonal, but now I think I'm gonna start diverging it and following the color flows. And so the shape is going to change. That is what I think I'm gonna do. Hard to believe kiddo is in grade 12. The very last first day of school picture <laughs> happened. Yeah. Uh. yeah. It was funny. Some guy did a, a parody of that with his wife, had his picture taken. It was like, you know, day 6,542 of work, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta take first day of school pictures, right? See how much they grow from one year to the next. Yeah. So yeah, he turns 18 in March. This is just like, what? How am I old enough to have a kid who's gonna be a legal adult in just a few months? My gosh. Well, when I graduated, I was still 17 because my mom put me in school when I was four turning five, not five turning six. So yeah, I found my grad picture. It was like, man, I was such a baby. I'm like, but I mean, technically I was only 16 here because yeah, they took the grad pictures at the beginning of the year. So I didn't turn 17 until October. But yeah, I take after my mom she has never looked her age either. I think she got ID'd when she was like 40. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I got ID'd when I, sheesh. I think I was like 37 or something. Yeah. And I said, oh, you know, sheesh. Here, the legal age is uh, 18 that they had to you know, some some provinces it's 21, but in Alberta it's 18. So I was like, wow, thanks for the compliment, you know. Like, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm legal twice over, but yeah, thanks so much for the compliment. <laughs> it was funny though, one of my friends said they got asked for ID and they hadn't expected it because yeah, they were in their 40s, right? So he says, he pulls out his, he's pulling out his wallet out of his, his pocket and he pulls out his keys and he puts them on the counter and then the guy says oh you have a blockbuster vid you know uh tag on your okay you're old enough <laughs> yeah yeah i was Telling my kid, you know, like you do get to, nowadays with streaming, you get to rent movies too, but they have more rules about it, right? You, I think you only get to rent it for 48 hours and once you start it, you have to finish it within 24, something like that. I said, yeah, when we were kids, unless it was a new release, you got to keep it for a week and you could watch it as many times as you wanted, right? Yeah, there were even times that uh, we had neighbors who would go to the same place and so we would just swap movies after like three days watch each other's movies and return them all because you know it uh it was a better deal that way so yeah 
they couldn't really control it, you know. It's on a VHS, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of technology change, because, um, yeah, we've gone from that. And now I think, like they said, thrift stores aren't even accepting people's old VHS tapes. Yeah, like nobody wants them anymore, so it's just chuck them out, yeah. Which kind of makes me cringe, but yeah. Actually, I saw somebody did this really cool art project. They used the old VHS tapes and they flipped them upside down and put them all together on a table so that the dots where the, the reels are, um, they made a Pac-Man table. So I thought that was really cool, yeah. So the do they look like the, the dots and then they put the little Pac-Man characters on there and then they covered the whole thing with like glass sheet or whatever yeah it's like okay that's that's a cool way to to use them rather than just throw them out because it's like it's plastic right and it's gonna sit in a landfill for a thousand years or something so yeah i thought that was really neat <laughs> yeah someone was saying yeah can we just stop at blu-ray because i really don't want to buy my collection all over again although i said I mean, I still watch some stuff that's on DVD, so. And some stuff, depending on how it was originally filmed, doesn't really look that much better on Blu-ray unless they went back to like the original and remastered it, so yeah. Yeah, they said that's one thing that kind of sucked with Star Trek is, I think it Voyager, they said was basically put on tape and not on film. And so that's why a lot of times if you're watching old reruns on TV, the quality is not as good. Yeah, because at the time when they filmed it, there really wasn't that big of a difference, but there is now when, now that TVs are bigger and higher definition, yeah. So, yeah, we're gonna get our kiddo started with Deep Space Nine soon. Because <laughs> we watched all of Next Generation with him, so, yeah. So I said, we have to do Deep Space Nine and then Voyager. <laughs> well, because I said he's been watching Lower Decks with us, but there's a lot of little Easter eggs in there that you will not get unless you have seen 90s Trek, so, yeah. Because, yeah, they did a joke one of... Uh, there was a transporter accident that merged people and then, oh, well, Janeway dealt with this, so I'll just see what she did. And then, oh my gosh, she just, you know. Yeah, because that's been a very controversial episode, the two Vicks episode. <laughs> oh. so. Or yeah, they had one where they met the fear clown, which was in an episode of Voyager. And of course, yeah. My husband and I were laughing our heads off and our son did not get the joke because he hasn't seen them. So, oh, that episode creeped me out for days, which I said, I assume was the whole point. Yeah. Basically they were in a simulation, um, in like a stasis where their brains were kept active while their bodies were in cryo sleep or whatever until they could be rescued. And the algorithm that was supposed to help keep their brains active actually kind of developed its own sentience and so fear actually became embodied as like a, an actual being with its own yeah like self-awareness and everything and so it did not want its existence to end which was what would have happened if all the people woke up so it actually was keeping them trapped there and yeah like I said that that episode gave me the creeps but I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for. So it was very effective. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so just making sure I'm in the right places. It's quite a long <laughs> slant of diagonal stitches here. Because I've done that before when I've been in the wrong, the wrong big block of a hundred and then yeah, I have confused myself later and I do not want that to happen. So. Yeah. 
yeah, so that's, like I said, I think where I'm going to cut it off is before the lighter green. And then I will fill that curve in later. So I could decide to sort of work from the top down rather than the bottom up, but since I've started my edge here, I would rather grow out from that than have the two meet in the middle. Sometimes I do that again. It depends on the shapes that are being formed. There's no hard and fast rules. I just do how ever I feel like at the time and make it work. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> this piece really grabbed itself together. Oh my goodness. I hate sometimes when there's only like two strands left. When you pull them apart, sometimes they decide to do this. Oh, what a mess. Like, I don't think I could tangle that up more if I tried. I'm trying to see what to pull where. I may just cut the whole mess out. I do that sometimes. Ah, gotcha, ha ha. Yeah, because I knew it was twisted around itself, not tied. So usually, if you're careful and patient with it, usually you can manage to get it smoothed out. That's the key, gotta be patient with it. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm not always, I'll admit. Yeah, it was funny, there was a meme I shared the other day saying, my patience is like a gift card. I'm not sure how much is on there, but we can try it <laughs> and see. Mm. So yeah, like I said, this is where I'm gonna start curving this one out. There, oh, that is the wrong color, I think. Let me take a look, or is it the right one? Oh, I think oh yes I was looking at the wrong spot okay I thought maybe I'd messed up but no I was looking at here and the thread was here yeah luckily those grid lines got me sorted out again yeah so these ones I'm gonna unthread for now because I am not gonna get to them for quite a while so I'm just gonna, cause like I said, this is where I'm gonna curve it away here. And then I will stitch within that curve later and fill it in. I thought for a minute I had made a mistake, but I had not, thankfully. Although that has happened <laughs> on this channel. Yeah, I say I have some people get intimidated and I'm like, you will make mistakes, that's okay. I've been stitching for a long time and I still do. You just have to learn how to fix them. <laughs> or sometimes you can fudge them and work around it. <laughs> It was funny talking about Voyager, the uh, the doctor on the show. He doesn't have a name, he's just the doctor. Anyway, the actor who played him during his screen test, um, he had to say, what was it? Somebody forgot to turn off my program. And then he ad-libbed, I'm a doctor, not a light bulb. And uh, yeah, they said that's what won him the part. <laughs> because yeah. That was a long-running joke on the original series. I'm a doctor, not a 
engineer, not a, you know, magician or whatever. So yeah. they always did little nods to that. There was um, in the Deep Space Nine episode, The Trouble with Tribbles, which is when they green screened them into an original series episode. And uh, uh, Dr. Bashir says to, to O'Brien and who else is it? I can't remember. Aren't you wearing the wrong colors, right? Because in the original series, Command was yellow and engineering was red. And uh, and O'Brien says, you know, don't don't you know anything about Starfleet history? And he says, I'm a doctor, not a historian. <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't believe I didn't catch the one on Friends where um, Phoebe sends in Joey to pretend to be a doctor to find out about this patient in the hospital that she kind of likes. And so anyway, he's asking questions and then he says, you know, date of birth and the guy gives it and then he says age and the guy says, can't you figure that out for my day, date of birth? And he says, I'm a doctor, not a mathematician. And I totally didn't catch it. I can't believe it until he yeah, asked somebody pointed it out and then, oh, of course. <laughs> or um, in, uh, I think it was in Star Trek Into Darkness, the uh, transporter isn't working so well or whatever, and they have to go into some dangerous situation, and Bone says, I'm a doctor, not a, and then just as they, uh, as they, as they beam out, and you never know what he was going to say. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, the actor, he did such a good job um, capturing Bones. In fact, they said, Leonard Nimoy said that it moved him to tears because he embodied uh, the doctor so well that it reminded him of DeForest Kelly, who they were good friends from their time on the original series. So yeah, yeah, he's a good actor. Like I said, he gives, he 100% becomes whatever character it is he's playing. Yeah. Just take a peek at this other thread all the way down here and how long it is. Okay, and what other strands I got there. Okay, so that is going to help me decide how far I want to carry this top one here downwards. branch off a fair bit so I think they're I'll be able to successfully juggle them all and I'll probably even have to add another one for the ones that are heading over this way carry this one, snake it up back and forth a bit, and the other one's gonna sort of take the bottom part too. Okay. Like I, said, I often decide as I go. So I often say I try not to work across too wide of an area as possible, but sometimes the runs extend so far and sometimes I do because um, it's a wider area but there's fewer colors so fewer threads so I don't have to worry so much about tangling yeah actually I'm gonna do that one too with this strand Park 
take it right down here. All right, and again, I've got one strand that's up here. That one's gonna carry over to the right. And then I have another strand over here. So yeah, like I say, there's branching off with different strands going different ways and it all makes sense to me. <laughs> to decide if I wanted to jump all the way up into that corner there with this thread or not, but I'm going to use a smaller piece for that bit there. Oh yeah, if I reach half done this month, bonus, but we will see what happens. because there was a little snarl on the back. So yeah, we're going to do, let me take a look at my printout mock-up here. Yeah, so we're going to do the flower bud. There's going to be more, more flowers and uh, leaves at the bottom, and then we're going to get the big open flower. And then into wings on the on the peahen yeah and then so it'll be a while till we get to the tail again which is my favorite part but i do enjoy the whole thing i to say this has some very beautiful colors quite enjoying stitching This is all darker colors here, so safe to pin stitch it there. So you can always pin stitch closer, even on the uh, stitches that you're 
currently stitching. I used to do that, but I like to pin stitch it a little further away now because I feel like having an extra bit of a tail across the back that then gets stitched over later, I feel that kind of helps make it extra secure. So, all right, so yeah, this blue, I'm gonna have one strand sneaking over this way and I'm gonna have other strands sneaking over that way because it kind of divides around, I think, another leaf that is gonna come from the bottom. So yeah, where it divides around this leaf, I'm probably going to park all these threads here, work the blue that's there, then work the leaf, then work on more of the blue there, and then continue working the flower and leaves. So as things branch off, then I tend to start working a smaller area and building off it. make a break as I sometimes like to call it. Some of my needles are squeakier than others. Probably the finish is wearing off. <laughs> Let's see, you do not want to separate, do you? There we go. is the short one here which yeah I tried to leave it threaded but it did not stay <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
it. So, like I said, I'm probably going to start working this more. However, these are still threaded, so I'll continue to work with them for a little bit before I, I tuck them away. Snarled up good. There we go. That's better. I'll do this bit and then I'm going to park this out of the way because I got to fill in everything to the left of it first. Or at least that's what I want to do. So, yeah. still haven't reached the bottom of this pass yet because that's going to be line 320 and yeah the the center of it vertically is right here so so unthread that and set it aside and do the same thing with this thread to the left here and work from there. Oops. Over here. Oh, wait a sec. I think I missed. Yeah, I missed this stitch right here. I forgot to fill it in before I parked it. to pick up this thread here there was an empty spot beside it which should not have been there so then I knew something was wrong okay so I'm going to end up with separate threads again I 
either that or perhaps I will not cross as I go. Yeah. I'm gonna have to add another thread at some point, I think. So this is gonna run out, but for the moment I won't. So this here is line 300, so I'll have two more big squares to go before I reach the bottom of this pass. Those two. Yeah. So I was just delaying the inevitable because, yeah. Again, it branches off around, I think, another leaf coming up from the bottom there. So. But I decided I was going to juggle both of these strands. run out. <laughs> we will see. I think it might actually be good for a few more after this. We shall see. Almost put that in the wrong spot. worked across a pretty big area today, bigger than I usually do. And yeah, once again, doing a pretty impressive stitch count since uh, 
There's not as many colors here, so it is coming along quickly. Okay. I don't think this one is very long, no. adding a new thread there as well. Oh my, here we go. Okay, so I'm trying to get that last stitch in and that hole is full of threads can be a little tougher. Oops. Oh, wow. That was way off. <laughs> I went over three stitches at once there. My gosh. Not even close. Oops. Oh, goodness. Off again there.
started it for a while so it's probably due <laughs> yeah this is a kindle fire that you have to kind of hack a bit to get pattern keeper to work on but i'm thinking next time when i need to replace it i may splurge and get a better one this is kind of a, a pretty bare bones so it works well enough but not great i think my i don't know maybe it's my, my imagination but i feel like the first kindle i had behaved better <laughs> Hey, look at that, we're well past 200. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, like I said, when there's not many colors, you can make a lot of progress. There's a new color showing up here, this 160, and like I said, so I think I'm going to kind of work the stuff that's it and to the left of it, and I'll come back to the stuff that's to the right of it later. I don't feel like spreading out any more than that, so... limits my number of live needles so I get fewer tangles. It just provides kind of a natural break point. side.
yeah, starting to diverge from my diagonal shape here. working over a bigger area than I usually do. But these color flows are pretty uninterrupted, so I feel like following them rather than breaking them up. Sometimes with parking, this happens. Oops. Just the way a thread gets stitched into sometimes can end up dislodging and, and then you can't seem to tighten it up again. <laughs> but I do have a way of dealing with that. So, so I'm gonna stop and park this one right there. I'm going to dig through my ends here to find a piece that's long enough. Okay. Of course, when I want to find one, probably hard for you to see on camera, but this one strand is its kind of loose and it's bugging me, so just stitch through it and then pull the loop like this back down to the back and then tie it off like you would a normal thread and then that stitch is all nice and taut again the way it should be did not have to rip anything out because I do not enjoy doing that. That is for sure. So, yeah. So I fixed that and I think that's where I'm going to take a break for today. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me today and I hope to see you here next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.